first talk of the day. Um, I just figured out how to say their names and now I've already forgotten, so I'm going to try again. A uh, big round of applause for, let me get this right, <coughs> uh, Getan yes. and Kwam. Yes, big round of applause. <laughs> thanks. Uh, many thanks for the, uh, for the introduction. So my name is, uh, is Kwam. Uh, I'm the founder of a, of a new IT school that we have just created two years ago in Paris, so the name of the school is 42, you see? <laughs> so I guess some of you are developers, so of course you know why we call that 42, because it's an answer for us. And uh, it's an answer to, um, to some question we had around education, and I'm here to talk to you about that, and Gaetans too. So in what kind of world we are living now, uh, it's quite easy to understand that uh, in the 18th century, we had a big move of era from the agriculture era to the industrial era. In 2008, something absolutely incredible happened. Detroit has bankrupt. And Detroit is maybe the, tour, the Eiffel Tower of the industrial world. And this means that, in fact, it's just the end of the industrial world. Now, on the same year, 2008, I think the value of Facebook was $18 billion and the bank group of Detroit was $8 billion, which is absolutely incredible. It means that you, Americans, have destroyed Detroit to create the valley. But it's quite huge, this information, because somewhere, why you have something when you are working in the industry, okay? You have concrete, you have walls, you have engine, you have things. On this, has been in value for eight billion, and at the same time, what you get at Facebook? Couple of servers? On this is 18 billion dollar valuable. So we are changing era. We are moving from the industrial to the digital one. And you must understand that mass education, massive education, has been created more or less 100 years ago. At the same time that we have created, in fact, the industrial era. And if you take a look on education, it looks like a supply chain. So more or less you arrive in education at three years old and you finish it at 23 or something like that. And all the value that are inside the industry are inside the education. The first one is to be individual. Why? Because the most important thing inside industry is the supply chain, not the people. And you are here to serve the supply chain. So education, they do it, you are alone. When you do an exam and you try to work with someone, they call that cheating. When you are in the digital, we call that collaboration, no? <laughs> but why they do that? They do that because the main idea of education is to give you skills and abilities that permit someone of the HR of an industry to swap to you with someone on the supply chain. And to know that, you must have certain types of skills certain types of abilities on whole, everything you did through exam, contest, I don't know, whatever, are done for that. The second one is to be average. This picture has been taken in 1996. It's a French rocket or European rocket. The name is Ariane, which is launched from a launch pad uh, from a French state in Kourou. So Kourou is in, the, is in America, it's a French state in America, in South America, French Guiana, that's the name. And in 1996, they had a software bug and the rocket explodes. Well, just at the beginning, huh, you see? <laughs> like it starts like that and it goes like that, then it explodes. And when they try to know where the bug comes from, it was a software bug for just a bit. So I guess here, more or less everyone work in IT. So you already know that you have 
billions of bytes inside such a rocket. And the error was just one bit. Imagine you go to an exam and you have a billion questions that is asked to you and you missed one. What will be your grade? A plus, A plus plus? In software, it's the rocket has exploded. So tomorrow, people, we're going to try to work on, for example, on health things, he health things, and we will, we will build some robots that will go inside you and do some things, okay? Do you want to miss a bit? <laughs> okay? So you are average. And the last one, but it is the same value, is to be identical. You must be the same as the other one because you must, can be swapped along the supply chain. So usually you have big norms around education. Whole, for example, when you do computer science in a huge university all over every state, okay, you have the same courses, the same lecture, maybe not the same teacher, but more or less you see everything is identical. So, it's time to act. So we are French, so we decide to act. You know? We have uh, the specialist of revolutions. So, <laughs> so, it was just the things that I just talked, uh, you can find it around a lot of talks. If you go on TED, for example, and you look at Ken Robinson talks, these kind of things, you will see that everyone is talking about that. Okay, you have to change education, you have to change the way you give your pedagogy, you have to think new around knowledge, zero knowledge transmission, all these kind of things. But in fact, nobody hacked. Does someone change something? Does someone do something around education? Did someone create a new school? Nobody except the French. And we are here to talk to you about that. So, let me introduce you Gaëtan, who work at 42 with me. And uh, he's going to explain to you what are the new values we want in a digital world for our children somewhere. Thanks, Colin. Hello, everyone. Um, First of all, uh, I will start by a fact that today, knowledge is not as important as it has been because today, thanks to Google, we can find everything on Google. You just have to, to just ask for it. You even do search Google on Google, like me, <laughs> sure. Uh, remember this website, let me Google it for you, five years ago. We just, uh, when a friend of you just ask a question, you, you create a request on it and you send him, just it's the gift, have fun. <laughs> um, about this fact, that a school doesn't have to, to transmit knowledge, we, we decide to, to focus on other values that are, the first one is creativity, and just, just focus on our field, computer programming, Remember last year there is a lot of matrix picture when you, you see that you have uh, what people think I'm doing of jobs versus what I think I'm doing and what my friends are doing. Actually, when you ask someone that what you are doing in computer programming, they, they think that you are doing something like that. But actually, uh, you, you are doing something like that. It's Agario. I don't know if you know this game. It's a web game. I think there is two kinds of people here. People that have already lost some productivity time to play because it's very addictive. And others that will lose tomorrow <laughs> at work <laughs> sometime because it's very addictive. The, the fun fact about this, it's I've been made by uh, a Brazilian guy, 19 years old, and he never go to a computer science school. But his game, you will see when you will connect to it, there is a lot of player. So he's done a lot of computer programming and he's done it well. So let's take an example uh, because we, we are not the first one to say that computer 
programming is not a science, but an art. L let's take a, an example. Uh, here you have to, to link all link by lines, four lines. And if you are doing it, you just take one, two, three, four, uh, five. No, it's more complicated than just link all link uh, dots. Uh, here is answer. I just broke something here. That's I broke your your thinking. You were trying to find a solution. Now, if I go back and just show you the picture, you will see this, this answer. I create uh, I, I break the creativity process, and that's why uh, when you are in a classroom with a teacher and students, well, what is it? It just uh, teacher that give us a problem and give a lot of solution. After he will give an exam, and what what is an exam? You just have to give back one of the solution, and you don't have to do something more. If you do something more, you won't have a good mark. Just give back. Don't think. Actually, don't think. Just remember the solution. Next, uh, we are. We actually, I will spoil something that we remove teachers. So how how do we learn in a, in a school without teachers? We we learn by experience. And what what how do we get experience? We get experience from acting, doing things. But when you you try to do something, you failed. But that's not what is very important. What is important is to to get up and watch. Where, 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 the, where, where are my failures or what, what I did something wrong? Learn from it and go try again. Maybe success this time, but you have to learn from your failure and fail fast, learn fast. A lot of entrepreneurship are doing it. It's very nice. <coughs> uh, a good thing is it's taking a lot of time to try to do something, but you, you don't have to just be a hard worker. You have to do things that you love in order to be patient about that. And actually, we, we manage our students to work something like 12 or 50, 250 hours by day, 15 hours by day, every day, Saturday, Sunday. Yes, uh, uh, for, for French guys that we say that we are working more than uh, 35 hours by week, it's kind of strange. <laughs> I know, sorry, but it's true. Our students are working more. Uh, we, are, we, are, we are limited. Maybe some of one are more awesome from, to, to other guys, but we are limited in skills and, and time. So we have to work in team. And how do we learn to work in team? We, we, we learn it by just by doing, doing projects. Our school is project-based, and we work in team from the school in order to, to be uh, in a company, to, to speak the same language from a marketing guy, a designer guy, because we have to be efficient really, really fast. And in order to make a great thing, we have to do it in team. Another value is about precision. As Quam said just before, uh, you have to be honest on what you are doing. Is it working or not? Because there's just nothing at the middle. You have just to be something like a Boolean because we, we are <laughs> the guy, so it's, it's true or, or false. And you just have to be precise on that. <coughs> so what, what is 42? 42 is a school without teachers, courses, exam, mark, and no deadlines. We, we add things that we open to everyone. What is everyone? We, we take people from 19 to 30. We don't check any background. Actually, everyone can, do, can come. W what is done before, we actually, we don't care. We don't ask for. And the, the most important part is uh, a school is not a business. When you put money in education, it, it breaks something. So it's a free tuition school. Students don't pay anything. So a anyone can come to 42. And we just, add, uh, we just select people on motivation 
and or their skills, and the, their really, what they want to do, and they are willing. Because education is not a race, we, we remove the lines because we are, we are different, like, like you can see, because it's I, I'm bigger, little smaller than me. <laughs> I'm much bigger. <laughs> so, so, so we can't learn at the same speed, at the same time, the same thing. We, 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 what, what is important is at the end, we know the same thing. And that's why we remove the deadline. Maybe uh, someone will, make, will, will take two years to, to learn something. Maybe one, someone will just take one year. But at the end, at the end of the two years, the two guys know how, how to do it. So to, to summarize about our value, we, we just focused, th th that's uh, just the only thing you have to, l to remember, l learn to learn, because the, the value here that are very, very important for us is about creativity, adaptability, uh, to, to work in team. That's the three value we are, we are teaching to our students. So now, Quam will just present to you how in concretely it's working. Thanks. So um, now I will try to explain to you how does it work really in real life somewhere. Um, so as, uh, as Gaetan said, one of the most important thing is around creativity, how to do things different. I guess someone from Compertino talk about things different, no? So it's major when you are talking about digital. Uh, the first thing to think different is in fact to take different people. So you must create a school that take everyone, white, black, yellow, green, whatever, okay? But you must take people with different social level, okay? Um, if you go in any school all around the world, you will see that there is strats like those, okay? And you know that if you go on the heavy league here, okay, you just have white people on these kind of things and you go down like that, okay? So, of course, after that, when you are Google or Facebook and you try to hire people, okay, of course, you just have whites, okay, because you want people from the heavy league and the heavy league have whites, on, okay? And you create just a turn like that and it's a major problem. It's a major problem because maybe in the industry, the most important thing is to how to create a billion of the same bottle of water, okay? Of course, you have a lot of engineering around that bottle of water because it's cheap, you can do it identical, massively, these kind of things, okay? But in digital world, the idea is not how to create a billion time Facebook. Facebook is already existing. As soon as you try to create a second one, it does not work. I think Google try it a bit. Okay? So don't create a thousand times, a billion times the same thing. So you need to have people that think different. And to have people that think different, you must take people from different parts of your society all together at the same place. It's the first things we try to do at 42. And for that, as Gaetan said, we don't ask for any background. You can be graduate, undergraduate, without any education. It's not our trouble. So this is a real form we have to fill for the student when you want to apply at 42. And as you can see, there is, in fact, more or less no fields. OK, we just ask to the people your name, your last name, birth date, on nothing else. Why? Because as soon as you create a form which is quite large, we think inside, the candidates start to think that, okay, another time we're gonna start through discrimination. In 1998, I was in the United States and I decided to give my blood. And I arrive and I have a form to fill and it was written, are you a white American, a black African, a thing like those, okay, and I was, what, they, what do they want, okay? They can say, say that I'm black, so I get hate, so whatever, okay, what's the, what's the matter of that, okay? It's blood, it's blood, okay? Um, so we don't ask to anything 
to feel for the students. So from that part, the, as he said, it's a tuition-free school. So you can apply. It's not a matter about how your parents get money or not. Okay, you know if that you have a lot of money anyway, what's going to happen? If your son gets bad marks, okay, you will pay someone f to uh, a personal teacher for him, this kind of thing. So at the end, he will have the, his, his, his exams. Not at 42, okay? It's around your patient. So when you arrive, so we had this year on that school, 80,000 appliers for a country of 60 million inhabitants, okay? So it's a quite a lot of appliers for the school because we have 1,000 iMac inside the school to manage everyone inside. So the picture that Gaetan showed you before where you see all the Macs with all the people was a real one. So it's work like that. So we have three levels of 300 Macs like that connected uh, to, uh, to internet, of course, because without Google, <laughs> there is no education at 42. So from that, you're going to pass some logical games to know, for, for us mainly is to know if you have your brain that melts your nose or something like that, okay? And you will have to do those games. And at the end of those games, we will move to something that is called the piscine. So in English, means the swimming pool. So from the games, we're going to take 3,000 candidates, okay? We will organize three swimming pools, three piscines, on July, August, and September. Why in summertime? Because students do nothing in summertime. <laughs> well, okay, usually students do nothing, but really in summertime, they really do nothing. So we do that on summertime. So it looks like a boot camp to be, to be fast. It's whole our pedagogy, how whole the way we have to teach things, which is concentrate in four weeks. It's very important because four weeks, usually in the classical pedagogy, when you apply to a school, what's going to happen? You have a field, maybe they're going to, to work on your field, uh, maybe they're going to ask you an exam, may, maybe a contest, things like this. But as a school, you have met the student, what? Two, three, four hours? How do you know something about that student? Okay, you, work, you are working like a supply chain, okay? You take information from the last school, Okay, and you said, okay, because you know that, and okay. Here is not that. So you are with us for a month, and we are with you for a month. So you can check if this kind of pedagogy is cool for you or not. And we can check if the student is cool for the school. Okay? And if everything match, then you go through the swimming pool. So we take 1,000 of the students, three times, 3,000 students, and we're going to select on each swimming pool 300 students, more or less, so we can start the year with a fresh set of 1,000 students. So the first day you arrive at 42, you will be connected to a student management system. <laughs> so how do you manage that? It's quite easy. You see there is a bar level zero. On, on top of that, you have he, T, he, C in 150 years. It's an estimated time to end of curriculum. <laughs> so to finish 42, you need to be level 21. Well, 21 is uh, half of 42. So it's not really scientist. <laughs> to gain a level, you need some experience points, you know, like in video games. And to have experience points, you must re do projects, okay? So when you arrive, each project, you have the time you want to finish it. So we take people from 18 to 30 years old. So some of them can have a, a background in IT, for example, or in computer programming already. So they're going to begin very quickly, okay? And some of them do, 
have no background but are completely passionate and will start to work, okay? The school is open 24 hours a day, seven days a week, all the year. So you arrive to the school, you do your job, and you leave whenever you want, okay? It's very important because another time, you know that rich people, they can study 10 hours a day, and if you are poor, you can work four hours a day because you need to work. It's not a problem at 42. You can work on the morning, but because there is no time, no deadline to finish a project, okay, maybe you're going to finish it in four weeks, but at the end, you will be the same level, you will be 21 as the rich one, okay, which is not the same thing if you are working in a classical pedagogy school, because if you are rich, you can work 10 hours a day, on each year you have things, you have exams, you have things like that, okay, so it's difficult for poor people to achieve a curriculum in a standard pedagogy school, not at 42. So, you arrive on that, and you will have to choose a project. So to choose a project, we have what we call the project galaxy. So the project galaxy is uh, divided in two. So each project are from level zero to level five. So easier project are level zero, and very hard project are level five. As you can see, you must do some project to go through, for example, a level five project. On the bottom, you have the half circle with different color. It's in fact kind of specialization project. For example, uh, here it's uh, adaptation on creativity, more or less group of projects. You can find Unix project, you can find Hey Hi projects for these kind of things, okay? On some project, you can find them the same project in different groups, okay? It's not completely split like that. So you choose a project, then you have to choose a group to work with you. So as soon as you pick up a project, we're going to say to you, you must be, for example, four of you, four of you to finish it. So you will have to find a friend around you, someone who wants to do the project with you. It's a coworker, he's not really a friend, okay? different, you, you don't work with your friends sometimes. <laughs> Things wrong can happen. <laughs> so we are not friends. No? <laughs> so you check, you take your, the group. So um, for example, you can see on the left side that there is two users currently registered in five teams on the seven, more than 700 users that can apply to that project. So you have to pick up one. So you have all the information about the fo your phone number, where you are inside the school, whatever, like that, so you can find a friend or find someone which is more or less your level to do the project and is interested by this kind of project. Then you have to code it. So is there developers here? A lot? No? Some of you? So mainly we work at the beginning on C programming, okay? It's very important for us to do some C programming, and we do C programming without nothing. Eh? So you have to start with, a, you, have you have just write, you have just read, and that's it. And you have to build your own C library. So they have to code back printf, malloc, free, okay, whatever you can imagine. And we love to start by that instead of Python or Ruby or this kind of skill, because we are a school for your life. Um, you know, C programming is very basic. You understand what is memory. You understand how do we work a, a computer. What is a stack? What is a heap? Okay, this kind of thing. Instead of just, uh, he's a Ruby developer. <laughs> <laughs> Mywebsite.new. Okay. <laughs> I just open a file and you just uh, in C just take uh, 100 line and uh, one after. So he one. asked me first to build the intro in C, but uh, I said no, I don't want. <laughs> <laughs> so you do the project, you put it in a GitHub, and then you have to correct it. So how do you correct something in a school without teacher? Well, you ask for your comrade. So that's why we introduce uh, what we call the peer correcting. And the peer correcting is the idea that when you have finished a project, you have to 
to present it to your team, to another student. So as soon as I say that, usually you ask me, okay, so level 15 student going to correct level one student. No. You have to pick up a student that will correct you. So you can be level 15 and be correct by a level one student. Why we do that? Because it's always around how you present things, how does it work or not. For example, I'm not an engineer, so I don't know nothing about car. In fact, I never bought a car in my life. So, but I can tell you what is the better between a Russian Trabant and a Ferrari, okay? So it's more or less exactly the same thing. So when you have finished to present the project to that student, you must do that five times. So at the end, you have presented your project five times to students. And when you have finished, you obtain that. This student is level 18. So you see his galaxy of projects is full of stars. It means that he has already finished those projects. So those are Unix projects, for example. So you have to do a shell somewhere. Yes, you have to do a shell. So you have to write back bash, for example. Um, so the project with star, he has finished it. The project without star and without color, he has to pick up if he wants. On the red ones, he didn't really finish them. Okay, so it's a kind of gauge that goes like that. So at the end, you are level 21 on voila. <laughs> because in fact, we don't arrive from the planet March pedagogy to uh, the Earth. In fact, we start more than 20 years ago of creating a school, the first one, where we introduce for the first time that pedagogy. I'm very proud to be here today. I'm very proud to be in front of you because one of that school that uh, I created was uh, Epitech, you see? So he's from, uh, he's from Epitech, not me, because uh, I'm one, uh, I helped to the creation of that school. And um, from Epitech, there is a guy, his name is Solomon, on your right here, on the Create Docker. So more or less, you must understand that if I was not there, Docker could not exist. <laughs> So thanks to my mother who <laughs> created me, because without me, there is no Docker. So seriously, Solomon represents something about a huge success of this kind of pedagogy. Because if you take Docker, it's exactly the three values we want. The first one, to be precise. Well, okay, there is a major release, but Docker is working, okay? So it's working. The second one, it's a team programming. It didn't do Docker alone. It does that with a very nice team. And you will find a lot of French people here, and all of them, more or less, come from that Epitech school. And the last one, it's about creativity. It means that before Docker, Docker did not exist. So they create things. So those three values are really the ones we want for everyone. So thanks a lot. That's the end of the presentation. Uh, if you have any question, we are here to give you answers. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, are there any questions from the crowd? Yeah, let me come over there so that they can get it on the recording. Sorry, sir. Yeah, I had a quick question. Um, for Since your classes are, are, are not time-based, Right, and you have physical facilities that are that hold, let's say, a thousand people. If the people don't finish within a year, how do you actually get more applicants to be able to fill the same space? Or is or is the is the teaching done online? Uh, for most of it, it's it's a, it's a good question. <laughs> so uh, how do we manage to have thousands and thousands of students because we don't know where they are, they are leaving the schools? That's your that's your question. In fact, it's quite easy. As I said, the school is open 24 hours a day. So in fact, we have 1,000 computers, but in fact, it fits easily 3,000 to 4,000 students because there is a lot of turnover around the use of the computer. So some of them come at night, some of them are morning, some of them are evening, some of them are the day. But usually if you come, if you arrive between two on the afternoon and six, it's a bit crowded.
So you mentioned that you know you accept applicants regardless of sex, uh, race, uh, and, and other characteristics. But in the photos that you showed, uh, most of them were white males. So how does your how, how do your students break down? Do you have the statistics? So about uh, if it, how how we manage that? It's uh, in fact we don't have any statistics because we don't ask to people where you come from. So we don't have a real statistics. The only one we get, as you can see, we ask for gender. So we know that we have 10% of girls in school. Yes, which is a lot. <laughs> when we were at Epitech, we were at three or 5%. So we get two times. About that, it's very, very, very difficult, and it's very hard for us. Uh, it's fully about culture. It means that if you give Lego to your son on a Barbie to your daughter, okay, that's normal that one wants to do marketing and the other one wants to do engineering. And so it's a lot about education. When we went to China, for example, or in Asia, in Asia you will find thousands of girls or almost 50% of girls inside the school, IT school, not in Europe, except we have open a satellite of 42 in Romania. Um, the first time we have the picture of the people inside and I take a look and we had 50% of girls in Romania. So the only explanation I've got about Romania that we don't have here in the United States or we don't have in France, it's because they were socialists a long time ago. <laughs> That's my only answer. Um, but after about the picture where you see white male, uh, it's not true. You have, we have a lot of people that come from everywhere. We have, or <laughs> we have a monk, an Indian monk, you know, with a, with a red suit. So we have a lot of kind of people, except girls. Um, okay, so that's unfortunately all we have time for, but I'm sure if you have questions, they'll be more than uh, uh, willing to answer them for you after the session. Yes, uh, big round of applause, please.